Alexander Graham Bell was born on March 3, 1847 in Edinburgh, Scotland. He was the second child of his parents and Eliza Grace Siemens. His father was a teacher of elocution and a phonetician, while his mother was a hearing impaired pianist. His two siblings, Melville James Bell, the first child, and Edward Charles Bell, the last child, both died in 1870 and 1867 respectively of tuberculosis. He was christened Alexander Bell, but when he was 10 years old, he pleaded with his father to have a middle name just like his two other brothers. On his 11th birthday, his father agreed and allowed him to adopt the name Graham, which he chose out of the respect he had for Alexander Graham, a Canadian family friend. From his childhood, Graham showed a sensitive nature and a talent for poetry, art and music that was encouraged by his mother. He also mastered the piano and soon became the family's pianist. Though he was normally quiet and introspective, he reveled in mimicry and voice tricks similar to ventriloquism with which he entertained family guests during their occasional visits. Graham had no formal training but was homeschooled. He later attended a private school for a year. Although Graham was not the best student, he displayed an extraordinary talent for solving problems. When he was 12 years old, Graham had a best friend, Ben Herdman, whose father was a flour mill operator. Graham invented a home tool for his friend's father that can be used to quickly and efficiently remove husk from wheat grain. Graham's mother soon began to lose her hearing gradually. This deeply affected Graham, who had to learn a manual finger language so he could sit by her and silently tap out the conversations going on within the family. Graham also devised a system of speaking in clear, modulated tones directly into his mother's forehead, wherein she would hear him with reasonable clarity. This preoccupation led Graham to develop an interest in acoustics. Graham later enrolled in the Royal High School at Edinburgh, but he eventually dropped out at the age of 15 because he didn't enjoy the mandatory curriculum. He only completed the first four forms. Graham's school records was marked by absenteeism and lackluster grades. However, his main interest was in the sciences, especially biology. After leaving school, Graham went to London to live with his grandfather, Alexander Bell. There he spent long hours in study and serious discussion and developed a passion for learning. With great effort, Alexander Bell taught his grandson to speak clearly and with conviction, the attributes that Graham would later need in his life to become a teacher himself. Graham soon followed in his father's footsteps and became a teacher for the deaf. At 16, Graham got a job as a teacher of music and elocution in Western House Academy at Elgin Morris, Scotland. The following year, Graham enrolled at the University of Edinburgh, where he joined his elder brother Melville, who had been enrolled there the previous year. In 1868, Graham concluded his matriculation examinations and was admitted to University College London. In 1870, after the death of his two brothers, Graham relocated with his family to Ontario, Canada to seek a healthier climate. In 1871, Graham found his way into the US and began teaching at the Boston School for Deaf Mutes and similar facilities in the area. While teaching the hearing impaired, Graham was contacted by a group of investors to help them perfect the Harmonic Telegraph. The Harmonic Telegraph was an exciting innovation of their days that enables multiple messages to be sent simultaneously over the wire. However, Graham was more eager to develop a voice transmitting device. After some negotiations with the investors, Graham was allowed to work on both Harmonic Telegraph and voice transmitting device, but with more focus on the Harmonic Telegraph. In the end, the voice transmitting device, which he would later call the telephone, won out. As Graham later explained, if I could make a current of electricity vary in intensity precisely as the air varies in density during the production of sound, I should be able to transmit speech telegraphically. While at the Boston School for Deaf Mutes, Graham met with Mabel Hubert, a 15-year-old deaf student. Despite the 10 years age difference between them, the duo fell in love with each other and got married in 1877. The couple later had four children. Their two daughters, Elsie and Marion, survived, but their two sons died at infancy. 
In 1876, Graham filed a successful patent on the voice transmitting device, and three days later, Graham made his first successful telephone call to Thomas Watson, who was his assistant. According to engineer Thomas Watson, Graham's famous words he heard over the wire were, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. After the successful development of the telephone, Graham established the Bell Telephone Company in 1877. However, Graham got involved in a serious legal battle with other investors, Antonio Musi, and most especially, Elisha Gray, who claimed they had invented similar voice transmitting devices before or about the same time as Graham. The legal battle lasted almost 20 years. However, none of the lawsuits proved successful in the end, and Graham won the case. It was reported that although Graham used a working design similar to Gray's, he used his setup and not the water-based variable resistor used by Gray. According to Graham, his mother and wife's deafness profoundly influenced his life's work, the telephone. The telephone invention proved to be a great success, and within 10 years, over 100,000 people in the US owned telephones. However, a few years after launching his company, Graham lost interest in managing the business aspect of his enterprise. He therefore sold his shares in the company. He invested his fortune in building the Volta Laboratory, a new scientific experimental facility in 1880. He developed the lab intending to improve the lives of the hearing impaired. The Volta Laboratory conducted several experiments using light to transmit sound. Aside from the telephone, Graham had other famous inventions which included the graphophone. The graphophone was a device that can record sound and play it back. He patented it in 1886. Graham's graphophone was a more commercialized and improved version of the phonograph invented by Thomas Edison some years earlier. While Graham helped Thomas Edison to improve his phonograph, Edison helped Graham to invent the microphone for his telephone. The microphone amplifies voice and sound and enables users to speak into the telephone with their normal voice instead of shouting into the telephone to be heard on a call. After President James A. Garfield was fatally shot in 1881, Graham developed a surgical device that could detect metal in the body. He called this device an electrical bullet probe. This device became a precursor to the metal detector we have nowadays. In 1885, Graham co-founded the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, AT&T. In 1888, Graham became a founding member of the National Geographic Society. He later served as the president of the society between 1898 and 1903. Together with his son-in-law, Gilbert Grosvenor, Graham transformed the society's publication, National Geographic, into a well-known publication. In the 1890s, Graham focused his studies on aviation and in 1907, he formed the Aerial Experiment Association and helped in the development of flying machines, such as the Silver Dart. At the age of 75, Graham was credited with creating the world's fastest hydrofoil at the time. Graham died peacefully on August 2, 1922, at his vacation home in Cape Brenton Island, Nova Scotia. As a powerful yet quiet tribute to Graham, people all over the US and Canada refrained from using their telephones during Graham's funeral. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other interesting videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.